time to start the Global Poisson. And today we have a great pleasure uh, to host Vladimir Rubtsov, who will be speaking on associative young Baxter equation from double Poisson structures to modular forms. So, Volodya, I give you the floor. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Anton. Thank you very much, uh, all uh, uh, organizers and colleagues, uh, for, for this uh, a great uh, honor to be uh, here. I will speak today uh, about uh, <clears throat> some things. Uh, if, uh, uh, if you want, uh, I, I should make some uh, confession that not all of them are uh, in my scope of professional uh, competence. And I speak about it uh, because I, I just was amused with some allusion which uh, I made a few years ago. And uh, Anton encouraged me to speak about this. And then um, I will uh, just uh, start with uh, my usual uh, uh, excuses. Uh, if I uh, have no time to speak about something in details, it is just uh, because this is a, it, it, it is a very, very huge and uh, big uh, subject. I will just touch uh, my uh, moder mo modest allusion about uh, some subjects. So I will start with uh, <clears throat> probably very well known in this community things about uh, uh, triangle of young Baxter equations. And uh, I will make some uh, historical uh, review uh, uh, of this um, triangle uh, in the context of my future talk. Then I, I'll remind again, uh, very uh, well known here and uh, probably two or three times uh, reported uh, on the global Poisson uh, things about uh, double and trace Poisson structures uh, and the uh, <coughs> general philosophy of representation functor. Then uh, I will uh, touch very, very uh, briefly uh, the relation of this uh, philosophy via double bracket with the associative young Baxter equation, which is one angle of this uh, <coughs> triangle. Uh, then uh, I will go to complex analysis area, uh, I will describe uh, um, some special solutions of associative young Baxter and uh, will uh, uh, speak about uh, some generalization of these solutions. Then uh, I will uh, remind uh, what is uh, various uh, interpretation of so-called Fe uh, three second identity. Uh, and then uh, the last uh, part of my talk, I hope I will have uh, time and uh, possibility, I will speak about uh, this uh, allusion and observation which uh, uh, I, I, I made uh, seven years ago after a remark of Don Zaguier, uh, so-called uh, uh, period relations and young Baxter, uh, associative young Baxter equation and uh, beautiful Zaguier uh, theorem about period relations of quasi or parabolic uh, modular forms. Okay, what's, come on. Each time something with my iPad, I'm sorry. So uh, what is the young Baxter uh, triangle uh, I mentioned in my uh, plan? So I will start with uh, uh, <clears throat> the young Baxter equations, which are, is a very famous subject of mathematical physics. And of course, uh, uh, people in this community know very well about a young Baxter equation. Anyway, I will precise what I mean under quantum young Baxter in this context. Uh, this is a, a, a triangle, um, a, a triang triangular uh, equation uh, of fun functional equation, uh, which uh, is written uh, here. So you see, uh, uh, we have a associative algebra uh, with unit. And I suppose that this algebra uh, contains a Lie algebra G. So it's a associative algebra associated with Lie algebra. And then uh, um, a young Baxter uh, uh, equation, it's a functional equation of uh, with parameter, uh, complex parameter. 
And the uh, uh, notation here are uh, standard uh, so-called Leningrad notation. And this equation uh, plays important role in uh, quantum integrable systems. And uh, people even sometimes think that if we have a solution of quantum young boxers, then uh, one can say uh, about quantum integrable systems. Uh, if we uh, uh, consider um, a quasi-classical limit of uh, the first triangular uh, relation, we obtain so-called uh, uh, classical young boxer equation, which is uh, uh, conventionally can be written uh, with the help of Lie algebra structure I mentioned before, uh, the, this equation. And again, uh, one, two, uh, one, three, two, three are, are uh, uh, Leningrad notations. So this is a relation in, uh, and tensor cube uh, and uh, uh, small uh, function r of u. Uh, this is a, a, a limit of uh, derivative uh, of the first uh, quantum big R matrix r with respect to a uh, parameter, uh, which I, I will denote not by h bar by, by lambda in my talk. And this is a, a g tensor g a valid function and the relation is considered as a relation in uh, under embedding of the uh, this g t t tensor g function in uh, tensor cube. So uh, this is a, a very important also from the viewpoint of classical integrable systems, and it is nicely uh, formulated completely in terms of Lie algebra and was a object of studies in uh, statistical mechanics in. Uh, uh, partial uh, nonlinear uh, equations which are integrated by inverse cutting method and cetera. I will not uh, speak about the many, many other different applications of this. And the main uh, object of my interest will be the third uh, angle of this triangle, so-called associative young baxter equation. This is a third version of young baxter and this uh, equation also, uh, I will consider, uh, first of all, parameter, uh, parameterly uh, dependent um, uh, version. It means that I will consider just uh, some relation, which is a germ of a meromorphic function with values in uh, tensor square of some associative algebra with unity. And uh, historically, uh, it is interesting that this uh, <clears throat> associative young baxter uh, equation Firstly, appeared as a, as it was happened in uh, number theory uh, uh, setting. Namely, uh, this equation was written explicitly, uh, almost explicitly, by Don Zagier in his uh, beautiful paper uh, of ninety one. Uh, this uh, paper uh, uh, I quoted here, and this paper in Invenzionis about periods of modular form and Jacobi theta function. And uh, uh, second time, this equation again almost un, um, un, I would say untouched from the viewpoint of uh, young Baxter relations was discovered by uh, Fagin and Dadeski in their paper in 93. And uh, uh, this equation appeared as a kind of exchange relations for some parameter dependent uh, algebras. And uh, this re uh, relation was a condition, Poisson condition for some Poisson uh, algebra, parameter uh, relation Poisson algebra, which uh, Adeski and Fagin just mentioned in this uh, paper. And serious. Uh, study of associative young Baxter equation was uh, uh, seriously uh, started in, in, in at the end of 90s in early uh, 2000 zero uh, by Sasha Polishuk who uh, uh, discovered uh, this relation in the framework of his approach to homological mirror symmetry on elliptic curve and this uh, uh, relation was a kind of uh, associativity constraint for or massy triple relation for some uh, A infinity structure related to this uh, homological mirror symmetry uh, on elliptic curve of Zaslov and Polishu. Uh, 
interesting that in almost in the same time, also very serious study of uh, associative young Baxter equation uh, was uh, uh, appeared in the paper of Marcelo Aguiar, who uh, studied in his thesis uh, associative version of Greenfield double. But uh, also I should mention uh, another uh, appearance of uh, constant, it means parameter independent young Baxter, uh, associative young Baxter, which was uh, 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 written in the paper of uh, uh, Fomin and, uh, oops, sorry, uh, Fomin and uh, Anatoly Kirillov in uh, uh, <coughs> 90, 95, 96 as a preprint, and then uh, this paper, which I quote, it's a paper of 99. Also, it's uh, uh, Postnikov who, who wrote this. This uh, relation appeared in uh, as a part of so-called Orlik-Solomon uh, algebras, which they uh, uh, studied. Um, now, I want to be more uh, Precise. What is the general associative Young-Baxter equation? Uh, so uh, uh, let's consider uh, a germ of neuromorphic uh, a uh, tensor a uh, valued functions uh, such that two uh, conditions uh, satisfied. The first condition uh, I will call uh, unitarity. Uh, and this uh, 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 condition that this function depend on uh, two parameters, uh, two groups of parameters. In fact, it's four parameters and uh, I split it for two groups. One group uh, UV uh, from C2 and another group XY uh, from uh, C2 as well. So it's a general meromorphic function in the vicinity of uh, zero. Uh, uh, and uh, um, the second uh, relation which is namely the very associative young Baxter, this is, is a uh, kind of uh, triangle relation, you see, it's a relation in tensor cube. And as I told you, uh, you can uh, think about it like about uh, embedding of uh, this uh, function R with the help of uh, um, um, uh, with, with the help of uh, just uh, uh, in canonical embedding of a, a, a tensor A in uh, A tensor A tensor A. Uh, for example, if you uh, want uh, to embed R uh, as uh, R one to three, you should uh, embed it identically on, on the third uh, factor in this tensor Q. Uh, Constant young Baxter, which uh, I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> which independ uh, on the, independent uh, on the parameters uh, X, Y, uh, U, and V, was appeared in the paper of Aguiar. And uh, it looks like this. Let's consider a, a, a vector space, uh, n dimensional vector space over C, as usual, uh, V. Let's consider uh, a V uh, tensor V. And uh, uh, let's uh, consider uh, R uh, like a endomorphism of tensor square, uh, such that the uh, unitarity condition uh, like this uh, satisfies. So this, uh, again, uh, <coughs> embedding uh, uh, in tensor cube uh, uh, supposed and uh, uh, with this unitary condition, we, we will uh, also consider the condition uh, of uh, triangle uh, type of sum of uh, R23, R12, and cetera. And I denote it by uh, A uh, star of R. Uh, the, uh, this condition was in, introduced by Aguiar and studied uh, uh, with respect to uh, uh, infinitesimal Hopf uh, algebras, uh, uh, which he introduced to study a uh, Greenfield double uh, analogs in associative uh, uh, category. Uh, Aguiar also uh, considered uh, so-called conjugated uh, young Baxter. So if you uh, conjugate by permutation the equation three, you obtain the similar but slightly different 
uh, equation. And it is easy to check that if you consider this A star and A, uh, they are, uh, if you want um, the difference uh, of them uh, explicitly coincide with skew-symmetric classical Young-Baxter uh, expression uh, in, in Leningrad notation, which uh, is analog of classical Young-Baxter uh, without parameter, you see. And uh, uh, it means that if you want uh, to think about solutions, then, uh, uh, and you have solution of uh, associative Young-Baxter, you automatically have a, so a solution of classical uh, Young-Baxter. So, but so, not sorry, Valoria, an if question, but uh, are, are some uh, solutions of the uh, skew-symmetric uh, classical Jan Baxter equation that we probably know, uh, are any of them also solutions of uh, this? No, that, that's, exactly what, that's exactly what I'm discussing. Uh, uh, it, no, if you have solution of associative Young Baxter, if you have a, a solution of associative Young Baxter, with this uh, unitarity condition. Then you have solution of classical Young-Baxter, but not vice versa. If you have solution of uh, classical Young-Baxter, you only have that A of R equal to A star of R. That's all. Okay, okay. But then maybe a provocative question and those, uh, those associative solutions, what, what are they good for? Uh, that's what I wanted to discuss in my talk. <laughs> okay, 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 sorry, sorry for interrupting. No, no, but uh, in, 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 the, in this context, uh, they, they are very uh, useful to, uh, to from different point of view. For example, uh, for example, these associative uh, young Baxter solutions, they are, uh, uh, well, uh, main, mainly, uh, well, they, they, are, they are related to, 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 to some uh, interesting uh, uh, co-cycles in, uh, in Frobenius algebras. Anyway, it is, uh, it is, it is uh, not very, very, I would say without, uh, um, without parameters, it is not very rich class of solutions, but with parameters, it's very, very rich. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, are they related in some sense uh, to the classical analogs of the half quantum algebras? You mean uh, Mannion, uh, Mannion matrices? Yes. yes. Well, uh, it, it, it is, a, is a half. No, I, 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 I don't think so. It is a half, but uh, is no, it no, a no, good, good half? No no, 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 I don't think so. It's, it's it, Mannion matrices, they are half of, I mean, quantum uh, Mannion matrices, they are half of quantum groups. And of course, the uh, uh, solutions of uh, young Baxter relates to quantum groups, but how they relate to Mannion matrices, I don't know, sorry. Uh, probably the answer is negative, no. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, the last, uh, uh, and uh, just I don't, I, I can't uh, miss this <coughs> opportunity to say that if I take, uh, mm, uh, uh, the so-called Rotobuxter uh, uh, equation. Let's consider um, uh, parameter-dependent morphism of uh, uh, associative algebra, uh, which satisfy to this uh, uh, relation. This relation uh, people should know because very recently in, in, in this seminar, uh, uh, our uh, Chinese colleague uh, gave a, a very, very, ex 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 very, very uh, impressive talk about the uh, uh, Rotterbuxter equations and their generalization. So this equation, of course, uh, uh, gives a condition of uh, associativity for some uh, deformation of um, initial product in the algebra with the help of uh, a solution of uh, young uh, Baxter uh, associative equation. Namely, if I take uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as my algebra A, matrix algebra, uh, and uh, I can write my uh, uh, young Baxter equation in and Rota Baxter equation five in matrix form, this. And this will be exactly uh, the partial case of my associative young Baxter with matrix algebra as a uh, basic algebra. 
uh, under uh, additional uh, matrix uh, unitarity uh, uh, condition. And then uh, you, uh, you see that this is exactly also uh, any solution of such matrix uh, associative young Baxter gives you a new uh, multiplication uh, defined by uh, uh, matrix R by the standard uh, uh, Rota Baxter formula. And I think that uh, this is also uh, a motivation uh, why we should think about solutions of Young, associative Young Baxter. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, main <clears throat> application of associative Young Baxter. Why I was interested in this? Because uh, I was interested in at some uh, moment uh, if it is possible to extend the Poisson uh, structure uh, in the framework of uh, maximally uh, non-commutative uh, associative algebra setting. So uh, the first naive approach, uh, uh, if you want to, to define just uh, Poisson uh, brackets for uh, any associative uh, algebra, uh, you will uh, face you you will face you you will face with the uh, following phenomena with, with that practically uh, there are no. Um, examples of such uh, ex extension. Uh, the only example uh, up to uh, some factor, uh, it is a just commutator in this associative algebra. And it was uh, in, indeed, it was proven by Daniel Farkas and uh, Gail Letzer uh, in uh, re rather recently, it was in 1998, that under very, very uh, weak, under very, very, very mild uh, condition, uh, if you have um, non-commutative associative algebra with a condition, which means that it is a kind of non-commutative uh, uh, non domain of integrity, uh, uh, then uh, any Poisson structure, it means any, uh, bilinear operation which satisfy to the algebra constraints plus uh, Leibniz rule in one uh, chosen way uh, gives you that it is uh, uh, always uh, proportional to uh, uh, commutator in this algebra. And uh, that's uh, what... Uh, uh, well, just, just, just maybe a stupid question. So how, how is this story related to double brackets? I, I, I just want to say that usual bracket you can't uh, introduce for, for, for free. You can't introduce for free. And the uh, price you should pay, it's a very, very poor uh, a set of uh, examples. If you have associative algebra, if you have associative algebra, to define just Poisson brackets like you do it in commutative uh, three commutative uh, uh, axioms, I mean, uh, two axioms of Lie algebra and uh, Leibniz rule gives you very, very uh, poor uh, set of example. Namely, it is proportional, uh, any bracket proportional to commutator. That's the, what uh, Farkas and Letts proved. So people started to think how to define something uh, maybe not uh, so uh, uh, rigid uh, on the associative. <coughs> Volodya. Yeah. Yeah, may I just ask a question or rather remark? Sure. And so what you say is not, exa not, not uh, exactly true. So there is, it, it doesn't have to be proportional to commutator, but there is some um, identity which relates the commutator and the bracket. We, we've got interchange between commutator and the bracket. So I found this identity, uh, uh, well, in early yeah, 90s, or I, I don't remember. I think you speak uh, about what people in non-commutative geometry called Ginsburg Lemma, I, probably. Well, I don't know uh, well, it is, what it's called it Ginsburg related, Lemma. It was... Yes, but if you impose some, uh, that's what uh, Farkas and Letzer proved, if you impose some additional, uh, not very uh, restrictive condition, then from this relation you mentioned, 
uh, the commutator, uh, the uh, bracket is um, uh, proportional to commutator, and the uh, coefficient coefficient it is element of so-called uh, centroid of this uh, uh, algebra. It is well, just uh, first of all, uh, I found this relation myself, perhaps before these people, and uh, secondly, after I have found it, so there's a public my paper in functional analysis applications about that called um, Poisson envelope of Lie algebra. Uh, so theoretically, one can construct such examples that they look a bit artificial, but uh, later I found that actually this relation was known uh, to Dirac and in early texts on quantum mechanics. Oh. So this this identity was uh, was known. Uh, so actually, it was discovered by Dirac. So at least partic some particular case. And philosophically, this was motivation for Dirac to identify it just simply by set as an axiom that quantum Poisson bracket must be proportional to the commutator. So that was his uh, motivation. Of course, it was it was not mathematical proof, but kind of motivation. So right. this actually has much longer history than you you are saying. And did you did you, did you check about uh, uh, Vitti Ginsburg uh, lemma? Because uh, we, we, when no, I didn't I didn't know about Vitti Ginsburg lemma. So, but perhaps uh, when when was it uh, found? This I don't know. It is it is you know it's kind of fol fol it's folkloric because people who 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 studied non-commutative Poisson geometry they know uh, this uh, relation which you mean probably because. In the in Farkas and Letzer, they also introduced this relation, but they called it uh, Ginsburg lemma without uh, references. Uh, well, um, oh, sorry. Okay, okay, yeah, but my paper was before before Farkas and uh, yeah. definitely before them. Yeah. Ted, but well, Lodge, so, sorry to intervene. Yeah, let, uh, let, let's postpone the detailed discussion yeah. to after the talk. Let's yeah, sure, sure. Just, just, yeah. just okay. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you, uh, Fedi. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know that you. I will. I will check. The relation between your construction and uh, thank you. So yeah, sure. uh, let's okay. go. Mm -hmm. Let's go further. What to do? And people uh, gave uh, two solutions, which are in fact uh, are, uh, very uh, close one to another. One solution was proposed by Bill Crowley Boyvi in 2011. It is published in 2011, but his preprint appeared in 2005. And, and it was a kind of answer to, uh, to a question which was posed by Michel Vandenberg. Uh, he introduced so-called H0 Poisson bracket. And H0 Poisson bracket, it, it is not uh, completely uh, uh, usual Poisson bracket. It is just uh, some operation uh, which uh, derives uh, the second, uh, um, the second uh, 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 argument in, in, in this uh, Poisson structure, uh, satisfy some uh, uh, kind of Jacobi identity, uh, uh, which is uh, also a kind of uh, derivation of, the, of, this, uh, of this bracket. And it is not uh, completely uh, skew-symmetric. It is skew-symmetric or only modular uh, commutator uh, uh, O only modular commutator. So that means that, uh, and also first, uh, on the first uh, place, this uh, uh, bracket, uh, on the first place, this bracket uh, annihilates uh, on commutator. So if you have a commutator on the first argument, then uh, the bracket with commutator on the first argument is always zero. This uh, uh, four axioms uh, uh, permits to define not uh, a Poisson uh, structure, but a Lie algebra structure on so-called abelianization of uh, the algebra A, or uh, why it is uh, called H0, because uh, this uh, 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 Lie algebra structure uh, defines on, on the a, uh, H0 cohomology, uh, Hochschild cohomology of the initial algebra. And uh, this uh, bracket plays important role in, in the definition of uh, conventional Poisson uh, structure uh, on good uh, 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 affine varieties in future. So uh, this, as I told you, this uh, crowley boyvi H0 uh, was uh, like an answer to a question which was posed by uh, Michel Vandenberg. And uh, Michel Vandenberg uh, 
before uh, I will speak about double bracket, I will speak a few words. Uh, about so, so sorry, just a second. Dima, do you want to, to, to ask your question or do you want me to read it? I, yeah, I can, uh, I can ask it myself. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I was just wondering if the, uh, uh, that previous list of relations, uh, the previous slide, uh, would be satisfied by any first order deformation of an associative algebra in well in the in the category of associative algebras. It just uh, yes, uh, it, it relates very very intimately to so-called Ladeleibniz structure. Okay, but what? Also, yeah. Yes. So, so were you going to say what uh, or what the question of Michel van den Berg? The question, uh, uh, because uh, I, I, I will, uh, the question and the answer, you, I will uh, just mention uh, in the next slide. So before I will go to this question of Michel Vandenberg, uh, uh, I, I just remind that in his uh, paper 93 in Gelfand seminar, uh, Maxim Kansevich uh, um, uh, <clears throat> proposed a kind of empiric, uh, uh, philosophical uh, principle, which uh, people uh, know now like representation of functor philosophy. And this philosophy uh, uh, gives you uh, that following uh, uh, I I idea that if you want uh, to, to, to have something uh, which make uh, uh, geometric uh, sense uh, from algebraic viewpoint, you uh, should uh, uh, go to uh, representation of this uh, algebraic object, and then you you will have uh, something good uh, uh, geometrically on this uh, 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 commutative uh, counterpart, which uh, uh, are on the representation side. So, for example, if you have general uh, associative algebras, then uh, representation. Uh, uh, Functor philosophy uh, gives you a possibility to consider the uh, affine uh, varieties, which are uh, just a, a finite dimensional representation of uh, your algebra in matrix algebra. For for example, if you have uh, any uh, uh, quotient of uh, free algebra, free associative algebra, uh, by some uh, uh, relations ideal R then uh, you can uh, uh, obtain uh, uh, the affine scheme, which uh, I denote by V here. And the function on this uh, affine scheme, they uh, have uh, something good, if you have something good on the uh, non-commutative uh, algebraic side on associative. And what something good, we should have an associative algebra side to have a Poisson structure on the representation uh, <clears throat> representation schemes uh, on the on this uh, sheaf of uh, rational functions uh, C of V. This was a uh, this was a question, and the answer which was done by uh, Michel Vandenberg as one of possible uh, question based uh, on this. Uh, uh, crowley boy uh, 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 result. First of all, uh, uh, we consider just uh, um, um, crowley boy structure H0 in this setting. And then uh, uh, crowley boy uh, proved that if we have the, on the abelianization, the Lie algebra structure I mentioned before, then uh, this structure induced real uh, conventional Poisson brackets on the uh, invariants uh, of my uh, representations C of V with respect to uh, uh, joint conjugation by the natural action of uh, non-degenerate matrices, uh, non-degenerate group J and C uh, on matrices. And uh, this uh, H zero structure and the conventional bracket coincide with the following uh, algebraic construction uh, bracket uh, given by Michel Vandenberg. So Vandenberg proposed the 
construction on the algebraic side, which gives you good Poisson structure on the uh, representation uh, part side. Namely, double uh, Poisson bracket, which Vandenberg introduced in 2005 also uh, in, in his preprint and uh, 2008 was published his big paper. It's a, a map from tensor square of associative algebra to tensor square associ associative algebra with the following uh, uh, replacement of skew symmetry. So uh, we uh, take uh, elements uh, A, B and double bracket of A, B should be uh, minus double bracket of B, A, but with respect to opposite uh, uh, tensor product structure in the A tensor A. This is the first uh, <clears throat> difference between usual Poisson uh, uh, bracket skew symmetry, but it looks like, uh, I want to say that it means that it is not skew symmetry. Uh, it is not, for example, uh, it, 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 this condition doesn't imply, for example, that bracket uh, with uh, element with itself uh, equal to zero. And second uh, uh, axiom, it is two different axioms uh, of uh, Leibniz uh, rule type. These two different uh, axioms relates to different uh, bimodial structures on A tensor A, uh, inner and exterior. So uh, the bracket which proposed by uh, Vandenberg derives the first uh, product, product on the first place with respect to the inner uh, um, bimodial structure and uh, uh, derives the second uh, uh, argument product with respect to uh, exterior uh, bimodial structure. This was a well-known thing. What uh, I was interested in here, and I uh, stressed by a red color, that uh, the analog of uh, uh, so-called uh, generalized Jacobi identity for this uh, double bracket can be written in terms of the uh, operators are R sub one, two, sub two, three, and cetera. And this uh, looks like associative young Baxter. And this uh, uh, operators are defined here for uh, two places, uh, M, N. Uh, uh, this operator acts in uh, case tensors uh, uh, square. And uh, it in, in its definition, uh, it uses so-called Swidler notation. So uh, prime and double prime means that you take uh, element in tensor, uh, uh, in tensor square and prime, it means that you take the uh, left-hand side part of this and double prime means that you have a uh, right-hand right -hand side of it. It's a standard uh, Swidler notation uh, in this context, probably many times explained here. So uh, the preposition, uh, if we take uh, the case of uh, representation CV, uh, CV uh, space, then a double bracket also defines a Poisson conventional uh, bracket. It means that uh, between elements of uh, this representation uh, space uh, of different places, which correspond to different uh, matrices uh, with number M and N. And between two matrix elements uh, with uh, uh, X, I, J, X, K, L, this bracket is an image of a double bracket of the uh, element with from uh, M's matrix, from element from N's matrix, and you take uh, the uh, place K, I, I, L, by the uh, rule, you take the Swidler uh, left-hand side, so, oops, here it is a, a misprint, it, is, it should be a double prime here, double prime, sorry. And uh, uh, you take a chi j place and you have I, L place. That's what means uh, this image under uh, the map, uh, 
Now, how it looks in uh, uh, explicit coordinates. If you take uh, the uh, matrix algebra A, like a product of uh, K uh, uh, times uh, N times N matrices uh, over C, then this trace Poisson bracket, this was uh, uh, our uh, terminology for this uh, uh, conventional uh, Vandenberg uh, brackets under the map phi because phi it's uh, uh, an, a map from uh, Prachese uh, lemma uh, which uh, describes the invariance of, of n times n matrices. So we have uh, brackets of constant form, which I don't uh, mention here, linear, quadratic, any. It depends on uh, which uh, uh, tensor we uh, defined in, in the uh, definition of our uh, trace invariant uh, uh, brackets. For example, if we want uh, to consider linear trace brackets uh, on my uh, uh, matrix uh, uh, space, then uh, we uh, should consider a three tensor B uh, uh, with uh, alpha, beta, gamma uh, indices, and uh, uh, then uh, to write a bracket between matrix element uh, in such form. And if we want to consider uh, the quadratic uh, trace bracket, we should take uh, uh, products of matrix elements from different uh, place of uh, this matrix uh, representation product and uh, uh, consider two tensor R and A uh, with four uh, indices. Condition of Poisson uh, structure, which given by these tensors are very, very nice. First condition, this condition uh, uh, between uh, on, on tensor B means that this tensor B defines a, an associative structure, uh, an associative product. So it is just associativity uh, algebra uh, structure. And the second uh, gives you uh, some uh, relations which uh, looks like matrix form of a constant associative Young-Baxter and some uh, exchange relations between uh, this tensor R. It means that if we don't have a second tensor A equal to zero and have only bracket with uh, four tensor R, then condition it is, uh, this condition is that it is a kind of uh, uh, associative Young-Baxter solution with Q-symmetry condition. But if you want uh, to uh, add the second tensor, you should uh, impose constraints of, of exchange between A and R and between uh, A itself. In in double bracket terms, you can write it uh, like double brackets between uh, elements uh, of generators of free algebra. So these uh, two constructions give you a double bracket uh, structure on free algebra given by tensor B with this condition, tensor uh, R and tensor A, uh, which gives you a quadratic bracket uh, on the same free algebra with K elements. So uh, uh, we uh, discovered this um, independently and uh, I, I was uh, <clears throat> later uh, discussed with uh, Travis, Tra Tra Travis Shedler described a similar uh, condition. This similar condition uh, it gives by uh, the following theorem. If we have uh, our free uh, uh, associative algebra considering uh, to be tensor algebra of some vector uh, space V, then uh, 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 operator R uh, uh, on tensor square of my uh, uh, algebra defines uh, by uh, the following expression gives you uh, and the condition of skew symmetry and associative Young-Baxter uh, double bracket. And this double bracket uh, gives you double Lie bracket 
uh, on uh, my tensor algebra. Double Lie bracket, it means that I don't impose uh, a Leibniz, two Leibniz uh, 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 ex external and uh, internal uh, bimodal structure derivation condition. I have only uh, analog of Lie uh, bracket, which uh, um, I, I, I call double Lie bracket. And uh, additionally, you can extend uh, this uh, um, uh, operator only if you impose uh, some uh, additional constraint. They are uh, very, very uh, natural in terms of this uh, four, uh, in fact, four uh, different uh, bimodial structures. And uh, they are uh, um, explicitly uh, done in the paper of uh, Travis and also uh, in uh, our paper later with Adesky and Sokolov. But uh, unfortunately, four years later, we didn't uh, knew about, uh, because this uh, constraint which Shedler imposed, uh, it, it was not published in his paper. It was published in first version of this paper in uh, archive. And the, in the final version, which he, he didn't put this, uh, condition. So uh, in, in, in his published paper, we didn't know this. And then uh, uh, I, I think that he, he, he visited uh, me in Angers and told about this. I don't remember exactly how uh, I knew that the first unpublished archive version contains this condition uh, on uh, both uh, Leibniz uh, rules. So if you add to this in this theorem, Schedler condition, you obtain uh, a condition for um, all Poisson, double Poisson uh, brackets on free algebra with the help of these solutions of associative young Baxter. Okay, then uh, after this uh, constant uh, associative young Baxter, which appeared uh, in uh, my previous uh, uh, slides, I, I want to uh, discuss uh, the uh, question and what uh, what's happened with more general with this first uh, page, uh, young Baxter associative equation, which depends on four uh, complex parameters. Uh, so it was our, uh, interest with Odesky and Sokolov to study this because uh, we were amused uh, we were amused by uh, reading uh, uh, Sasha Polishuk paper why uh, he always considers only uh, equations not with four independent parameters but always parameters which depend uh, or on two or on three and uh, uh, the other uh, arguments, they are some or uh, difference of uh, our four. So it means that uh, X, Y, U and V, which we try to uh, introduce uh, arbitrary in all uh, Polishuk uh, constructions, they were or uh, some or uh, difference of our uh, arguments. And uh, we wanted to uh, describe a more general uh, solution as much as possible. Unfortunately, uh, I, I want to say that uh, our result was a kind of uh, negative theorem, no-go theorem. That we proved that uh, no other solutions, which was uh, discovered by Polishuk, uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it was impossible uh, to find at least for uh, one-dimensional uh, uh, for one dimensional case. So uh, to explain more precisely, I need to remind you uh, what the uh, machinery I, I will use. I will use the so-called Jac uh, Jacobi Tita function. I will use uh, the another, this is most important uh, in my second part of my talk function, uh, which is called Kronecker function. And the uh, Kronecker function has different uh, uh, version. It, um, a very Kronecker function in elliptic case, it is a ratio of uh, theta function, uh, Jacobi theta function uh, in, in, in two points 
eta plus z uh, and eta and z sample, simple, and uh, theta prime and zero. And uh, oh, of course, you can consider uh, trigonometric and rational degeneration of this uh, elliptic uh, uh, Eisenstein function. And uh, I will need for future also uh, so-called uh, Eisenstein odd function, which is a, a rational analog of uh, one over z and trigonometric analog is just, a, it's, it's a kind of half of this Kronecker function. And the elliptic, it is just a logarithmic derivative of uh, theta function, uh, Jacobi theta function. And uh, uh, also famous uh, P function of Weierstrass, which is uh, uh, the derivative of uh, E1 uh, minus derivative E1 uh, shifted by the constant defined by third and first derivative of theta function and the generation one over shin square, one over z square, all people who uh, met uh, the uh, so-called uh, potential in calogero moser integrable systems know this function by heart. And uh, I will uh, use it uh, to describe solutions of my uh, associative young box equation. No, just again, I have some problems. Uh, what the pro uh, pro property of these functions, which uh, I, I want to, to remind. Uh, first of all, uh, Kronecker function has a simple pole in zero and uh, residue in this uh, on Z equal to one. It is uh, uh, quasi periodic uh, if you take some uh, lattice with uh, mm, tau with uh, tau, uh, it's a period along the uh, uh, x uh, uh, y, um, or say with imaginary part of tau non negative. Then uh, we uh, have uh, periodicity in uh, direction uh, the x y uh, or x uh, or, or, or x and uh, uh, quasi-periodicity uh, in the direction of tau, in the direction of y, where we have the tau as a parameter. Uh, and uh, this uh, um, exp uh, of uh, eta, it's a um, factor of this qu uh, quasi-periodicity. So uh, we have beautiful uh, identity. I, I will describe it uh, in more details a little bit later, so-called uh, uh, Riemann identity for theta function, which uh, I want to interpret like uh, one of uh, avatars of the Fe identity for uh, Kronecker function. And also, of course, uh, for computations, uh, it is useful to know that there are two uh, uh, so-called heat equations. One heat equation uh, uh, of theta function, which uh, uh, relates uh, derivative of, of a parameter uh, tau and uh, um, uh, complex uh, argument z. And uh, this theta uh, function uh, solution of heat equation gives you uh, that Kronecker function gives also solution of heat equation, but with uh, um, double derivative over z and parameter eta. And also, uh, uh, I would stress that if you change the order uh, of your uh, uh, points z and eta, then the function is the same. And you can think about this symmetry like a symmetry between uh, elliptic curve point and point on the Jacobian of this elliptic curve. So if z is a point of the initial elliptic curve, which is a quotient by the uh, lattice given by this tau, then, uh, sorry, I'm speaking tau in French way in tau. I should say tau probably, no tau. How, how it is properly to speak in English, tau or tau? Either way. Anyway, tau, tau. And then it is uh, dual to uh, uh, eta on Jacobian. So now uh, what I wanted to, to tell you about the solutions of 
uh, General Young Baxter. So as I told you, uh, after uh, in our paper uh, with Adesky and uh, Sokolov, we proved uh, a, a no-go theorem. Oh. In this paper, we proved no-go theorem about uh, general solutions of four different parameters. So we 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 uh, proved that only parameters uh, which are difference of first and second class of parameters enter as a solution, namely rational, uh, trigonometric, which here is in the exponential form, and elliptic, which I expressed in terms of this theta function. Here, uh, uh, I, I use notation theta one, but it is the same function which uh, I had uh, before. Uh, it is a traditionally called uh, theta one one Jacobi function. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we, we knew that this solution we obtained by Polishuk in his paper 2002. Uh, he just generalized the approach of uh, Belagin and Drinfeld, uh, who solved uh, um, classical Young-Baxter equation. As I told you, classical Young-Baxter doesn't imply a, a solution of associative. Associative solutions imply solution of here. And Polishuk uh, uh, found solution of associative, not, not classical. He, he, of course, he used classical uh, solutions of Drinfield and uh, uh, um, Belavin, but he used it only like an inspiration. He, he constructed similar data, combinatorial data for uh, solutions of uh, associative young box. So what, what I, uh, I, I, I forgot about it because what, what to do? We had no uh, new solutions, uh, nothing interesting, but we, we made some uh, work and I told about this work in 2014 uh, in Moscow conference. And uh, on the, in this conference, sorry, what's happened with my connection? Uh -huh. And uh, in this conference, uh, Don Zagi uh, attended my talk. And when I wrote the young, uh, associative young Baxter equation, he said, uh, I saw something very similar. And you know where I saw it? I saw it in my paper 91. So I know who was the first who wrote the young Baxter, associative young Baxter. And, uh, uh, he, he showed me this paper and after uh, one night of reflection, uh, 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 we have found uh, this change of variables. And this change of variables uh, substitute into the famous uh, Riemann uh, identity from, uh, for example, Mumford book, Tata lectures on Tita gives you exactly uh, the uh, equation of our solution, uh, slightly different uh, normal, normalized. So we have uh, our solution, which we obtained with Odesky. And this solution uh, after this uh, uh, substitution gives you a famous uh, Riemann formula. And in Zagier paper, famous Riemann formula, or he used to parameterize some uh, interesting relation for uh, periods. I will speak uh, very soon. Well, well, maybe we should negotiate a little bit. So, so how much time we need to show, say, the next highlight, right? Or how, 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 how is it for timing? Oh, you should, uh, uh, I, I, I need maybe 10 minutes. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, let's let, let, let's try. Uh, of course, seven would be better. Seven bit. Okay, I will be quicker. So first of all, I want to say that for uh, m equal to one, this uh, uh, associative young Baxter can be written in in terms of this Kronecker function, and uh, I have found. 
paper of uh, Alshanetsky, Levin, and Zotov, where this uh, uh, M equal to one associative young Baxter Fe identity was uh, rewritten in matrix form for so called beloved Baxter elliptic R matrix. And this beloved, uh, uh, it is uh, Fe identity, uh, I, I prepared uh, uh, to explain in, in details. So you have the addition formula for uh, one over Z. It is just a uh, elementary arithmetic here. And then you have uh, dividing by uh, the product of this difference, you obtain the rational form of uh, uh, Fe identity. And this uh, rational form uh, can be generalized for two uh, uh, argument in rational case. And this is a, namely analog of uh, Fe identity for uh, uh, Kronecker function. So uh, elliptic, uh, I will not speak about trigonometric. There is, of course, for cotangent, a trigonometric uh, Fe identity. But uh, you can write matrix analog very, very simply. You just take usual flip, multiply one dimensional uh, uh, Kronecker function, which we uh, used with Zadesky, Sokolov, uh, and uh, which Polishuk used in, in, in his solutions. And you obtain some matrix. And this matrix, uh, Levin, Alshanetsky, and Zotov uh, uh, studied to uh, give you, uh, uh, for example, uh, beloved Baxter matrix, which uh, solves uh, uh, X, Y, Z uh, uh, chain uh, uh, for n equal to two, and can be explicitly written in terms of uh, sigma, sigma matrices of Pauli and uh, uh, function, elliptic function phi, which is just uh, proportional to uh, Kronecker function. So uh, this beloved uh, Baxter matrix sati satisfy to uh, new uh, associative young Baxter matrix relation, which is a kind of matrix fair identity. And under skew symmetry and unitarity, it gives you a uh, rational, uh, gives you a uh, quantum young Baxter. And uh, it gives you two classical young Baxter with commutator and anti commutators. And the anti commutators, uh, it is not zero. It gives you the next term of uh, uh, quasi classical limit of this matrix, uh, uh, beloved uh, young Baxter. And also, there is a part of uh, compatibility. It looks like our uh, in constant case compatibility between A and R. And this uh, cl classical uh, limit comes from uh, additional term M, which uh, if you develop your uh, matrix on the parameter eta, then you obtain classical matrix, which uh, was before. And this new matrix uh, M uh, in the second uh, term, uh, eta square, if you want, uh, in this development. And of course, uh, the, uh, the unitarity condition also changed. Unitarity condition, instead of one tensor one, uh, changed by the term, which depends on uh, uh, P function. So this typical um, new uh, matrix solution of associative young uh, Baxter equation, uh, which you ask. Okay, uh, I have no time to speak about uh, cross ratio uh, allusion because I suppose to speak about fair identity like cross ratio. I will go directly to uh, the uh, I will go directly to uh, Zagier uh, theorem. Uh, it's a connection, sorry. Oh, la, la. 
Okay. Uh, I will uh, remind because probably uh, I need to remind the uh, background. Okay, so uh, what we uh, uh, want uh, to, to discuss now for the last five minutes, it's uh, the so-called uh, modular forms. Oi. I'm sorry, it's connection. Nikita, can I do something with, uh, to maybe just to, okay. Uh, I have now first uh, slide with modular forms. So uh, uh, as if you don't know what is a modular form, you just can imagine that you have a Poincare uh, upper uh, half plane and you have a holomorphic function uh, on this uh, uh, upper half plane which uh, satisfies the, the following uh, property of uh, under the action of uh, modular group uh, SL2Z uh, uh, on the uh, um, coordinate on this uh, upper half plane. And uh, I, I would suppose that this function not only holomorphic uh, on, on the Poincare uh, upper half plane, but it is also holomorphic uh, in uh, extended uh, Poincare upper half plane. So it's holomorphic in infinity as well. And uh, uh, I will have a, a, a Fourier expansion, uh, which includes all, also n equal to uh, a zero, uh, uh, it means constant term. But if we have a, um, the modular form of weight uh, K uh, uh, without uh, uh, constant term, uh, with, with, where the uh, constant term equal to zero, I will speak about uh, parabolic uh, weight K uh, uh, form. And uh, this uh, notion can be uh, uh, um, considered in the framework of uh, uh, generalized generalization of my uh, uh, Eisenstein first uh, function, which I showed you. And uh, for uh, k equal or bigger than two, we will consider uh, the so-called Eisenstein series of, of weight car. And the coefficients uh, of this uh, series, so tau is my parameter uh, in upper half plane, and coefficients of this series, they are uh, um, defined by uh, Bernoulli numbers, which satisfy to this, uh, uh, very famous uh, uh, development, uh, very famous uh, uh, series. And the uh, uh, coefficients uh, sigma, it's a so-called uh, divisor functions, which uh, uh, defined by uh, sum of all divisors uh, of the number n. So uh, this uh, Eisenstein series uh, gives you a example of modular forms of weight k if k bigger than four. And uh, the first uh, k, uh, with k equal to two, uh, it is not a modular form. If you check it uh, uh, under the action of uh, the uh, um, group uh, uh, SL2Z, you, uh, you will have this uh, relation and this relation uh, uh, motivates as, together with the property of derivation, uh, motivates the extension of notion of modularity. Uh, we consider quasi-modularity it means that uh, we will consider functions, uh, uh, S, S plus one functions, F zero, F S uh, on the upper half plane, uh, such that F S is uh, non-identically zero, which satisfy under the action of my uh, uh, SL2Z, the following uh, uh, property. And uh, uh, this property uh, uh, in the case when F uh, is only one which gives you a modular form. 
for it, any quasi modular form, we, you can define uh, a so called uh, period polynomial. Period polynomial uh, defined. Uh, Uh, in the following way. Let's consider a parabolic uh, 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 form, quasi-modular form uh, of weight K. This parabolic, it means that you uh, don't have a zero uh, co a constant uh, coefficient in Fourier development of this uh, quasi-modular form. And then we can define the uh, period polynomial by the following uh, formula. This uh, uh, period polynomial uh, has a very interesting and uh, uh, rich uh, properties and uh, you know, plays an important role in so-called uh, uh, Hecke uh, L series. I will, I will not speak about it. I will just uh, consider only such uh, parabolic cuspidal forms, which are uh, eigenforms with respect to so-called normalized Hecke uh, uh, operators. And this uh, 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 normal uh, eigenforms for, for these Hecke operators, they uh, can uh, define some uh, formal uh, series C uh, using the uh, period polynomial uh, R sub F X R sub F Y as uh, I, I defined it here. Uh, they are normalized uh, with respect to some uh, scalar product, which is called Peterson product. It is a kind of L2 structure uh, on the space of uh, eigen Hecke forms. I have no time to speak about it, and I, I didn't want uh, to, to, to go into details, but I want to say that Zagier theorem was quite beautiful description of this uh, coefficients of these coefficients uh, CK, uh, XY, uh, and T, uh, which uh, entered in, uh, uh, in the period polynomial uh, description. Namely, uh, Zagier wrote uh, uh, generating function like a series uh, uh, over uh, T. Uh, and the uh, um, main part of, of this function it depends on the x, y, t minus two. And he proved that this uh, generating function satisfy so-called period relations. These period relations are uh, encoded here. If you have uh, the matrices from SL to Z, S and U, and then uh, action of these matrices on, uh, on the uh, generating function in such a way that uh, any uh, matrix acts only on X and uh, acts on T by uh, um, multiplication by uh, denominator of uh, the standard action. It means if you want that, if you have a matrix, uh, sorry. If you have a matrix. Uh, Valoria, I really yeah. apologize. Maybe we should go to the punchline. We should wrap it up soon. Okay. That's, uh, I, I, will, I want to say that uh, these relations, as uh, I observed in 2014, uh, looks like associative young Baxter. And indeed, uh, there is a theorem, which also you can find in Zagier. And this theorem uh, gives you that uh, the generating function Oops, can be uh, expressed uh, in terms of uh, this Kronecker function, which uh, satisfy under some uh, identification. And this identification is uh, here. So if you take uh, x, y, t uh, and y, t, and uh, you put uh, uh, this generating function as a product of two Baxter, Baxter Belavian elliptic R matrices, then from associative young Baxter, you can obtain through fair identity period relations and vice versa. From period relation, you can obtain associative uh, uh, young Baxter 
solution uh, for m equal to one. So uh, the last slide is that uh, I didn't write this observation, but uh, in 19, in 2019, I have found a paper where the guy, uh, Nils Mattes, proved this uh, accurately uh, demonstration of uh, my observation. Of course, he didn't know uh, about uh, my observation and I didn't try to, to write something about it. What I want to say is the last phrase because it, it, it relates to our uh, subject, I love, I love seminar, our seminar. I have found a very beautiful uh, paper of uh, Pierre Charolais and Robert Scheck. And they proved that uh, Fe identity in this context, in, the, in context of Eisenstein uh, function and Eisenstein series and Kronecker function, uh, equivalent to one cycle condition. And uh, I have a conjecture that this one cycle condition uh, uh, relates to existence of some Poisson Lee dynamical structure uh, on the group SL2Z uh, over uh, two parameters, U and Xi, uh, which enter in this uh, phase identity cycle. So we can uh, write this uh, probably like a, a Poisson Lee structure, but this is uh, of course a conjecture and uh, I, I didn't try to check it because I had no time. Thank you and sorry for uh, uh, interruption with uh, Okay, well, thanks a lot. Um, these questions or comments? So. Yeah, Ted, you, you want to ask a question? Ted? Um, um, yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Anton. Uh, well, I already said I can only uh, share uh, Share perhaps a, a reference. Uh, I will send it to Valodia. Reference to my paper of 1995, uh, which is called uh, Poisson envelope of uh, Lie algebra. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Send to me please, because I didn't. I didn't know it. I, I want. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I will. will do that. But it is it is it is strange that you, these people they 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 didn't quote you. They just well, know. things happen. So and that's why I guess I raised this question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. More questions or comments? Uh, well, I I think that the the, the, the question which uh, uh, about this uh, one car cycle it is it is interesting for those who who are experts in dynamical uh, Poisson Lee structures, it is probably uh, good, uh, good uh, exercise to check. Maxim? Uh, yes, uh, hi Vorodia, thanks for the talk. Uh, so I was just wondering, do you know if you play with double quasi Poisson bracket, if you get anything interesting at all? What, what, what sorry, the last uh, So if, if you- I play with double Poisson, uh, if you use the word quasi Poisson bracket, yeah, uh, do you have something? I don't know a dynamical associative Young box star equation. It, 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 I think it's a good it's a good question uh, for, for uh, probably for some for groupoids. Uh, I I don't know. Anton, do you know something? Uh, not like that, but but who knows? Usually there are analogs, right? So one can hope for. Yeah, okay, at least it's not uh, something already known, or maybe it's just hidden somewhere. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe I have an eighth question. So this uh, uh, solution of the associative Young Buckstrow that you're getting from number theory, right? From from mm -hmm. here. 
uh, does it give rise to some uh, interesting double Poisson bracket or, 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 or what, what? Yeah, uh, this uh, this is, you know, uh, I, I, I had no time to speak about integrability and uh, it was, of course, uh, not very uh, uh, probably uh, important, but uh, I, I had no time also speak about big big part of our uh, activity with uh, Odesky and uh, Sokolov about double brackets structure which depend on parameters. So we, we had some examples of uh, double brackets uh, solution which depend on parameter. And uh, uh, this uh, number theoretic uh, solutions we at the moment we, we didn't uh, uh, we didn't use, but now if uh, we can uh, take this solution uh, using, using this Baxter uh, Belavinar matrix type uh, proposed by uh, Levin, Alshanetsky, and uh, Andrei Zotov, of course, we can extend uh, the examples of double bracket uh, structures depend on parameters. And uh, it means new, multiplic new associative multiplications in uh, um, in, in algebras with parameters. Yes, we, we, we have a couple of uh, theorems with Adesky and Sokolov where we modified the multi multiplication with the help of solutions. So this number theoretic examples, of course, one can use. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a little bit uh, a part of this activity in the last, uh, so I didn't think about it, but probably we can extend some examples. How much, how much interesting they are? It's another question. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, any more questions or comments? Uh, if not, for lot of thanks again. Thank you everybody for participation. Um, uh, is it possible to have the slides? Uh, so, Volodya, yeah. could, you, could you, I don't know, maybe you can paste your slides in the chat? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. To have and just, just one remark that I don't know, Volodya, whether you've seen this reference of Ted, it's also on the chart. I see. Yes, okay, I've seen. So, okay. so, so Thank maybe, you. maybe one should copy it before before we close the session. Just yes, I, I'll yes. do it immediately. Chat. Uh, yeah. So two tasks: okay. copy the reference and then paste your slides so as we can download them. Uh, just a moment. My slide, it's presentation. Does it work? Uh... I don't know, maybe, maybe you should still uh, push, push yeah. enter or something because we, we don't see it yet on the chat. Okay, but okay, uh, I, I will ask them by, uh, no, no, by no, mail. No. Maybe I, it's no. it times. It's so you, you, you just, you just uh, take your file and put it in the no. chat. Yes, yes, I, what, what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. It doesn't work. No, uh, because it is just. Uh, Ah, Liza is not here. I sent it to Liza. Okay, okay. okay I, I'll ask them by mail. Thank you. Okay. No, I don't understand what's here because uh, probably to event. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot again. Thanks, everybody. And next time we'll have uh, Yasha Eliasberg speaking on global.